our uh, current standard uh, practice in, uh, in treatment of uh, severe asthmatic patients have some limitation in this moment on uh, treating the patient uh, without biomarkers of uh, eosinophilic inflammation. We have much more option for patients with increased number of eosinophils and with allergies, but for the patients uh, that are not controlled with um, high dose of inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonists, and need something else um, to control the symptoms and the exacerbation, we have a limited uh, number of options. For example, we could add antileucotians, we could add um, um, oral corticosteroids uh, or um, um, long-acting um, antimuscarinic anticholinetics. Um, but uh, this is the only option. The patients treated with all class uh, of uh, medication used in us and still uncontrolled, after we check uh, the adherence to the inhaler, which is very important to any asthmatic patients, uh, we treat comorbidities that also could impact on uh, quality of life and controlling the symptoms. Um, practically after uh, adding uh, this, this last option, as I mentioned before, and I forget one mention, another option for patients with uncontrolled symptoms and frequent exacerbation is to add uh, macrolide uh, on long term with the risk of antibiotic resistance. So yes, we have much more option for the patient with severe asthma, uh, and with uh, high uh, eosinophil levels than uh, the other type of asthmatic patients.